Hey my loves, it's Kaylin Rose and I'm back with a couple verses of the day. So today's verses of the day are coming out of Jeremiah 4 verses 3 through 4. And it says, this is what the Lord says to the people of Judah and to Jerusalem. Break up your unplowed ground and do not sow among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Circumcise your hearts. You people of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, or my wrath will flare up and burn like fire because of the evil you have done. Burn with no one to quench it. So first I want to get into prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray this word may take root and may open up all of our minds, hearts, soul, and spirits. Heavenly Father, we pray for a deep revelation and I pray there may be all of you and none of me. I pray this video will resonate with its intended audience or person. Thank you, God, for breaking up unplowed ground on this day and forth. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us a fresh new word and a fresh new mindset and renewing our mind and spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray over this word to be fruitful and multiply. Amen. So, this word, I felt this word in my heart, soul, and spirit. Because when the Lord says, break up your unplowed ground, I had to really, I was really pondering, what did that mean? And when I looked up, what does unplowed ground mean? It means ground that has not been prepared for crops. So what, what does that have to do with anything? So when I took some notes and I looked up then the KG version, KJV, King James Version, and it uses fallow ground. And so this also means land not prepared and cultivated for crops. This means seeds cannot grow on unplowed lands for farmers to plant and harvest. And so basically, when God says, unbreak your unplowed ground, it's basically us that we're not prepared and we're not ready to bear the fruit of the spirit in our lives. And so how does this happen where we need to break that ground up? This means spiritually. And so this is literally meaning to apply yourself to improving your mind, your relationship with Jesus, and your habits and your thoughts. This is what it's talking about when it says, break up your unplowed ground and do not sow among thorns. And so thorns are literally the things that can choke out the word of God, which can be the worries of life, the desires of your heart, and riches and pleasure. This can also be having hatred in your heart, having bitterness, having resentment, having greed, lust. Anything that you struggle with, maybe addictions of drugs, those are thorns that you may get the word of God, but then the devil chokes it with those thorns of life that do not allow it to take root. And so... This is important because sometimes we're not ready to give our life to God because we don't even revisit the places we need to, to heal. So how can God even get to us if we don't even revisit that part ourselves? We have to bring those parts we don't revisit, such as like you maybe never felt close to any of your parents, so you harbor resentment and anger in your heart. Your heart's too hardened for the word of God to take root in effect, to experience the fruit of the spirit, which is love, peace, and all of the above, etc. And so when God says to circumcise yourselves to the Lord, circumcise your hearts, he's meaning to consecrate yourself, which means to dedicate yourself to God for divine purposes and uses. But we cannot be used by God until we break up that ground. 
we have to remove those thorns of selfishness, of ignorance, of stubbornness, whatever your heart is harboring towards maybe your neighbor, your family, or even yourself. You might have shame or guilt because of your past. Whatever that is that's buried deep, we have to remove that before the word of God can take root in our heart because whatever belief systems you've adopted from your family or the people around you, that's taking root in your heart right now. And so God wants us to uproot that so his word can transform us and truly take deep root and we have a firm foundation. Here are three ways that we can focus on removing those barriers that are separating us from God and moving forward in our relationship and just experiencing his presence on a deeper level or just drawing into the relationship on a deeper level. So one would be being open-minded. We have to pray against that stubbornness. I always feel it coming up and I have to renew my mind that I am dedicated to God, so I am not my own. So not my will, God, but yours. Number two would be to be vulnerable with yourself and before God in prayer. Because if you're not real with yourself, you cannot be real with others. So it all starts internally with acknowledging how you feel about your past and what made you feel a certain way in your life and you bring that before God. Don't be in denial because that doesn't help break up that ground to be able to pour on a new foundation and accept and heal and move on from what things were. Number three, the main one I've been learning is to listen. Accept constructive criticism. That might be the hardest thing in this narcissistic world is to hear that maybe you're not so perfect after all. Constructive criticism is so beneficial because sometimes other people can see things about ourselves that we can't see. And we only trust someone else's opinion if they are literally a person of God that is not tearing you down, but providing ways to help you grow as well as correcting your behavior. Breaking these barriers means it's time to evolve. It's it's actually an ugly process. God is pruning you and getting rid of that dead weight, those dead thorns that are pricking you from evolving into the person you're meant to be. It's like, have you ever seen those YouTubers that are like, how I reinvented, reinvented myself? That's what God is doing in this season. He's trying to reinvent you to your higher self, to the person that he knows you to be. But in order to do that, we have to remove those barriers and we have to start breaking up that ground so it can be fertile and ready and already prepared for when God plants seeds and, and fruitfulness in our lives, it takes root and it stays and it's there to grow us. And we don't get choked up by our past or old belief systems. If we don't turn from and repent from those wicked ways, those thorns that are haltering us, God says like there's a fire that will burn that no one will be able to quench. That means no one will be able to stop when the wrath of God is upon your life. No one will be there to help or save you if you continuously do wrong in the eyesight of God. So choose to do what is just and what is righteous versus delighting in your evil ways and be saved. So I love you guys and I hope you guys say a prayer to be excited to start this new journey with God because yes, it's it feels horrible, but at the end, it's like giving birth, like birthing, birthing your newest self. So I haven't went through birth, but it's like labor pains. Growth is uncomfortable. Evolving is uncomfortable. But at the end, you wouldn't trade it for the world. You do it all over again to be the person you are today. So I pray for you guys to continue to evolving and to continue to seek God for those answers and concerns over your life. Bye.